we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! He was 18 years old, a bright young man studying for his A-levels and determined to become an architect. He died at the side of a leafy suburban avenue with blood pouring from stab wounds. The incident won little coverage in the national media, but those who mourn him say the killing is just the latest in a series. Stephen Lawrence was murdered simply because he was black. It was 10.30 at night two weeks ago, and Stephen was waiting at this bus stop on his way home when five or six young white men came across the road. Although one shouted a racial taunt, Stephen didn't run. Then, without any provocation, the youth stabbed and beat him. As he lay bleeding, a friend tried to stop a car for help, but even in this middle-class area, no one did. He bled to death before he reached hospital. The back of his head, he had an iron bar across his head. He's got a hole in his neck, and it's a butcher's knife they use. They didn't use a flick knife or a small knife. Yeah, it's it a went butcher's into knife. his lungs. From, so up into his, from up here, it went straight down into his lungs. Right, so and he's the, had that. The, the knife that on he his arm. went through his arm, right through to the other side and into his side. So, you know, so, it's, you know it's not, it's, um, it's, 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 these are professional killers. You know, they know what they're doing. In an unusual move, detectives immediately confirmed the motive for his murder was racial, and the black community mourning his death has been on a knife edge ever since. Stephen is regarded as the fourth young victim of racial murder here in the past two years. Nelson Mandela interrupted a brief visit to London to offer his support to the Lawrence family. Mr Mandela met the family alone for 20 minutes. He told them he shared their grief and said the evil of racism was claiming innocent lives. He said the Lawrence's tragedy is our tragedy. It's a matter of grave concern that uh, there should be a resurgence of racism uh, throughout the world. And uh, especially in a place like Britain, which of course we regard, as I have said before, as the home of parliamentary democracy. Uh, we are very used to this type of thing where life is regarded as cheap in South Africa. And, uh, but nevertheless, uh, it's a sense of deep concern that it should happen in a country like Britain. Mr and Mrs Lawrence were clearly moved by the meeting with the ANC president, but they're critical of the police investigation into their son's murder. They say they've passed on names and addresses to the police, yet they haven't acted. It's two weeks since Stephen's death, and there's not even one. And as I keep saying, if that had been the other way round, they would have had a black person. If a black person had committed a murder, they would have arrested him by now. But because it's a black and it's white, it seems as if they're condoning what these people are doing, because they're not showing to us that they are out there doing their job and arresting people. What's the point in me giving them the information if they're not going to act on it? The Stephen Lawrence murder inquiry is about more than finding his killers. Did you see... Uh, no, see Nothing at all. The handling of the investigation could have significant political implications too. As a result, senior officers from the Commissioner yeah. down are taking a keen interest. Definitely not this time of the night. Successfully handled, the case would boost the confidence black people have in the police. Poorly judged, it could seriously damage an already fragile relationship. I think there's been a slow recognition by the authorities, particularly investigating authorities, the police, a slow recognition that there is such a thing as racial harassment, racist attacks. And for a very long time, I think they not only were slow but reluctant to recognize the nature of the thing they were dealing with. So there was, were no monitoring units, there was no specific squad set up and attacks that plainly were racist were either dismissed or were just treated as ordinary assaults and there was no extra funding and no extra resources put into it. The repercussion of that has been, until fairly recently, that in order to achieve evidence uh, which might lead to a conviction, 
they've left it too late. In other words, by the time they've taken it seriously, the offenders have disappeared. Eight months after Stephen Lawrence was killed, there had been no prosecution. Two white youths had been arrested and the police passed the case to the Crown Prosecution Service. But the CPS dropped it on the grounds of insufficient evidence. The Lawrence family expressed frustration at the lack of results and scepticism of the government's commitment to fighting racial crime. In October 1993, the Home Secretary, Michael Howard, visited the Tower Hamlets area of London after a serious attack on an Asian teenager. I saw this video of him where he went to Tower Hamlets or wherever it is to visit. And his ideas, he said, everything's fine. Everything's not bloody well fine. The people are out there suffering. Listen to the people on the street. There's no point in listening to people up in Parliament and in, in places like that. They don't know. You listen to the people and to the people that these things are happening to. All he does is a smile on his face and say that we're doing all we can. We are really committed to, um, to fight racism. This country is not committed to fight racism. They're not committed at all. Well, we are certainly uh, committed to taking effective action. And we are taking effective action. Now, the, the, the sad facts of the case involving her son are that the Crown Prosecution Service came to the conclusion that there wasn't sufficient evidence in relation to uh, those who'd been arrested by the police to bring them before a court, to bring them to trial. The inquest into Stephen Lawrence's death was halted when the family's barrister claimed he had a witness who could identify three people at the bus stop at the time of the murder. In April 1994, the Crown Prosecution Service said that this new evidence was also insufficient to take the case to court. By now, the family were considering taking out a private prosecution against the people they believed were responsible. At a press conference, the family's solicitor expressed dissatisfaction at the way the case had been handled from the beginning. He claimed the police had failed to collect forensic evidence at the scene of the crime, that witnesses had not been contacted, there had been none of the usual publicity or reconstructions, and the reward for information was only £5,000. The police were asked to put an appeal on the national media, such as Crime Watch, to appeal for witnesses. The police were asked to effectively have a high-profile relaunch. Those suggestions went ignored for months. They should have had forensics so that when they catch these people, it could back up what they're saying. And they have got no forensic, and this is one of the main problems. This is what, why the case has, has stopped. Because unless somebody said to them, well, I've done it, or somebody who's one of the people who've done it, say, well, we done it, they're not going to be able to care, take these people to, care, to court. At the memorial service for Stephen Lawrence, the sermon was given by the Bishop of Croydon. It is true that justice must always be tempered with mercy, and the dignity and worth of the criminal must be respected and safeguarded even in punishment. But an ineffectual criminal justice system is the strongest ally a murderer can have. Moreover, it creates further victims as the bereaved families come to realize that they are being asked to live with their ever-present traumatizing and incapacitating sense of failure to do what is right by their loved ones. So crime must not be condoned and an important and necessary first step is that the offender must be brought to book. By August 1995, there had been no prosecution for the murder of Stephen Lawrence. I believe there should be state prosecution, properly resourced, independently undertaken, with, that is publicly accountable on criteria that are clear. 
so that we all know why and how the prosecutions take place. The problem has been over the last 10 to 15 years is that people who should not have been prosecuted have been, and people who should be prosecuted haven't been. And the criteria that have been applied have been somewhat arbitrary, at least in appearance. Therefore, one has to fall back on the, the right to privately prosecute, the right of the individual to sue. And increasingly over the past 10 to 15 years, people have decided, well, we will take the law into our own hands. We will prosecute where others have not. We will sue where others have not. And they have achieved, these individuals and so on, over the last 10 years, they've achieved a great deal, certainly in damages against the police and so on. So that, but the, so, so that, that has proved to be one way of demonstrating to the public authorities that this is what they should be doing. So, recently there have been significant advances in the official response to the problem of racial attacks, although many of the initiatives, like those you have just seen, are limited in their scope. The machinery of justice, too, doesn't always defend the victims of violence as it should. There is so much more that still needs to be done by all the agencies concerned. The problem of racial attacks and harassment remains a serious one, affecting thousands of people every year. In this context, independent and community campaigns such as the Justice for Stephen Lawrence campaign and the Neo Monitoring Project are crucially important. When we finished making this video in September 1995, the Lawrence family had just won an important victory in their battle for justice with their private prosecution. Two men were committed for trial for the murder.